Today I'm going to show you how I painted the synthetic stock on this Ruger 300 Win Mag, why I painted it, and why you shouldn't. Okay, I'll show you how I'm going to paint my gun. Um, I bought this gun at an auction on gunbroker.com and had been sitting on the shelf at a dealership for a long time. Long enough that you can see where the sticker damaged the stock. Otherwise I wouldn't be bothering to paint a gun. Um, but it damaged it there and and on the, the forepiece, the forearm there. Um, and so this bothers me. I don't like that stain from the sticker. So I'm going to paint this gun. Um, the first thing I'm going to do though is sand it down. I need to get a mechanical bite as well as a chemical bite. Uh, the primer will will stick to the gun, but I want it to not only bind chemically, but I need to have a, a, a slightly scratched up stock so that it'll have a mechanical bind as well and have something to grab onto. To do that, I'm going to use these Duragold um, pads. It's a it's about a 320 grit pad. It's kind of like the the thing that you use to, to wash dishes and scrub pans with, but it's made for paint. Um, and that will rough up the surface enough that I can I can get a mechanical bite with that primer. However, with this gun, um, when it was put together, you probably can't tell, but there's a, a seam there where the, the mold was put together on this Ruger. Um, and, and so I want to get rid of that seam. To do that, I'm just going to take a, a small piece of, of 180, degree, 180 grit sandpaper that I have from a, a car project I'm doing and sand that down first so it's a little bit smoother and a little more appealing to me. Um, and, and so it's just a matter of, of roughing up the stock. Uh, you can see I've already got it taken apart as far as I can, so I'm just um, dealing with the stock. As near as I can tell, this this butt piece doesn't come off. It's got kind of a one-way screw that's put it on is what it feels like in there. So I don't want to deal with taking something apart I can't get put back together. Uh, so, so that's step one, sanding this stock down. I've got everything sanded and and buffed with that, that buff pad. Um, just a couple of words about sanding. You never want to sand inside anywhere like these holes um, or inside the where the barrel is going to be. You don't want to loosen those areas up where they're supposed to be tight and you don't want to spray paint in there and tighten them up where they're supposed to be loose. Uh, that can affect a lot of things with your gun. It wouldn't be that dangerous but you may not even be able to get your gun back together and if you did it wouldn't be as accurate as it's supposed to be. Um, I'm not hoping for a tremendous amount of accuracy out of this this um, 300 Win Mag. It's going to be a hunting rifle, not a, a safe queen, and so um, I'm not too concerned, but I don't ever sand inside of those holes because it can loosen up the, the fittings and the parts, and you don't want that. Uh, I've got everything now. You can see that it's all lightened up, uh, and it's got dust on it. So now I'm going to do the first cleaning. I'm going to clean it with a product called Pre. It's made by Eastwood, um, eastwood.com. Some people use acetone. Um, you, you don't want to use oily things like brake cleaners and things like that because you don't want any oil residue left on this. We're going to make an attempt to remove that stuff later when we start wearing gloves. So whatever product you're going to use to clean it, test it on a small spot um, I've tested it inside here uh, where this magazine comes up. I knew it wasn't going to be seen and it's not a fitting part and so so it didn't damage the stock so I know that this this pre um, I've used it on a car that I painted and and it's a little more gentle than than some things so you you might have to work a little bit harder but but you know I know it's not going to damage anything so I'm just going to take a clean rag um, and I'll show you this pre. Uh, I've got it in this, this aerosol can, but you'll see how it will just take this, this dust off. 
um, and I, I clean that up and when the pre dries, this paint prep, it'll dry and it should still be hazy. If I see any spots in here after it dries that's glossy, that means that it was covered with dust and I didn't sand it. So I'll go back and buff it again and, and, and finish up any sanding that I might have missed and then clean the dust off and, and move on to the next step. Let me show you what I mean by shiny spots. This part of the stock looks pretty good. Even inside the hand grip here, I can tell it's all been sanded. But up here in the forearm, you can see how these areas are darker. Um, I'm going to... I'm not satisfied with that. I'm going to have to, to take a popsicle stick or something and, and put that that Duragold uh, buff abrasive on here, that pad, and and get down in there a little bit better. Or what's going to happen is my paint isn't going to stick to that shiny stuff uh, and it'll flake off. Well, there, there's a few th reasons that people have problems with their paint job when they paint a rifle stock like this because it's if you're going to use it like I am for hunting and things, it's going to take some abuse. It's going to be on, on a four-wheeler or maybe a pack saddle or, if nothing else, strapped to your back walking through the brush. And, and these areas where you don't have a good chemical and mechanical bind, that'll come undone. And, and you'll lose chips of paint out of here. Uh, so, so you want to, to look for those shiny things um, on the, the emblem here on the grip. I didn't sand that so you can tell oops sorry I didn't sand that so you can tell it's a little bit shinier um, and and I'm going to mask around this corner and and leave that like it is uh, this seam <laughs> I'll just point out you can see a little bit of seam there I'm not too too worried about that it's smooth and and the paint will hide that a little bit. I might touch that up a little bit. But that seam went around the trigger guard and inside the trigger guard. Um, and, and so I kind of had to work on that to get it how I wanted it. But you can see this side isn't quite as bad as the other. Um, I've got most of that is still a, a white. But on this side you can tell I've got darker patches in here that I need to work on. That's one of the reasons I use these these abrasive pads because they'll flex down into that hole usually and and get in those those cracks and crevices and where sandpaper won't. You try doing that with sandpaper and what you'll end up doing is sanding off these ridges and sanding off your grip. It'll make it all smooth because it's stiffer. So I like that that buff pad, that scuff pad. I guess a lot of people call it a scuff pad, but I like that because it'll get down into those curves and 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 it's a little bit easier to work than sandpaper. So I'm going to sand it, I'm going to clean it some more, and, and then we'll move on to masking. One last word on cleaning before I start masking this. Can you see, maybe, maybe you can't in the camera, but can you see the difference between this, these grooves, and the grooves back here? it's got dust in it and and I've I've cleaned these with this bam or this skewer this bamboo skewer thing and the rag and got that dust out you have to ask yourself do I want my my paint and primer sticking to the gun stock or to this dust that's going to fall out and so so you have to look for all of those little kinds of things that that can affect your paint job and and in this case that dust would would eventually loosen up and come undone and, and the paint around it will be bound together but it, you want a secure surface underneath all of it and so um, you just want to be sure and, and clean all that little dust specks out get everything you can everything you can see uh, and I haven't said anything in this video about safety um, equipment and I know somebody will comment and say yeah you you should have said something about wearing masks and eye protection I'm not your mom <laughs> so I, I assume if you're watching a video like this you're adult enough to know that that paint's going to to clog your lungs and and damage you so so I'm not I'm not going to lecture you on safety equipment when you you may want to have visited this little video to to see how I painted a gun 
but yeah that that is important and, and I'm going to be using an epoxy primer that will kill you um, so I use a an organic mask and and protection just like a, a car paint shop would um, so and and you don't have to use that we'll talk more about that later but for now just realize that you have to get this gun as clean as possible and when we do the final cleaning we'll actually use a tack rag and try to get everything off of it that we can't see I finished scuffing up the stock and finished the first cleaning now I'm going to start masking and when I mask something like this that's fine and detailed I use these magnifying glasses and and this 3M performance automotive tape um, the the reason I use this is because it makes a really fine line it's it's fairly thin so you don't get a lot of paint build up if you're doing two colors or something but mostly because it doesn't leak if you just use regular masking tape off the shelf at Walmart uh, that uh, you're gonna spray that paint on there and it's going to seep under the edge which you know if you're painting something where you need two colors and a fine line that's a big problem but even here I don't want it seeping under the edge and staining this and and getting paint on this this butt pad or seeping into these channels and changing the the fit and finish on the on the rifle so so I'll use this these magnifying glasses because my eyes you know I'm I'm almost 60 years old <laughs> and my eyes are going and so um, and so glasses are good but that magnifying glass helps me get a really precise line where I want it to be and and that automotive tape so that's that's what I use if if you're young and and got great eyes you may not need that magnifying glass but you want to get automotive masking tape uh, to get that fine line and not get the seepage okay I've got it all masked up uh, first thing I did was was found a balance hole so I could put my hanger in there um, don't know if you can see but it's barely not touching the edge so I probably won't have to do any touch up there but I might have to um, make sure you fill the holes for try to get a focus here um, make sure you try to fill the holes so you don't get paint going down in there and ruining any, ruining any kinds of threads these are pass through holes that hold the the barrel on the stock I mask the logo the rifle sling holes the butt then <clears throat> this gets filled in because I don't want any paint in there where that barrels going to to seat I don't those clearances are pretty tight and even a, a layer of or two of paint is going to cause a problem so I've masked that off um, you'll notice that the gun <clears throat> is darker than and after I cleaned it, that's because it's covered with oil. Uh, not motor oil, but oil from, from my hands. That's the next thing that, that you want to worry about that can ruin any paint job, is getting your body oil on there. Um, as I've been finishing this old Pontiac of mine, I have signs made that say, do not touch. It's not just for other people to not touch, but to remind me, because once you get to a certain point, it's gloves you're always wearing rubber gloves because you don't want your body oil on that gun stock or anything else you're painting because paint won't stick to oil so now I'll clean it again and and you'll see that I'll clean that body oil off the next time you see it it'll be all light um, and I'll make a hanger to to hang it and be ready to shoot paint here's my fancy paint hanging setup two ladders and a two by four a screw in the 2x4 with a chain going down to my hang. Um, I haven't touched the gun since I've cleaned it, with my bare hands anyway, and you can see how it's turning white again. I've got all those body oils off there. Now the last thing I do before I paint is I will hit it with one of these tack cloths. Uh, that'll get any dust or hair or anything. When you use those scuff pads, they'll leave little teeny metallic 
wires and so if those are still there this will take those off uh, I'm going to paint with this airbrush and and I'm going to talk about how you can do that with a rattle can later Okay, I'm going to take this tack cloth and wipe down this gun. Um, you can see it's kind of a a cheesecloth with with some sticky stuff on it. Almost, you know, it's not glue, but it's not like pine sap, which is really sticky. And it will take any of the dust and stuff off and and kind of clean that up so that I get a a good solid. There's a good solid stick to be, between the paint and the and the gun stock. Um, now, a word about the primers and stuff that I'll that that I'll be using. I'm going to use uh, an epoxy primer. It's made by Eastwood. Uh, the reason I'm using it is because it's what I've got. Um, it's a white primer. I'd probably prefer a gray or maybe maybe even black primer on something like this project but but it's it's what I've got so I'm going to use it you don't need to use an epoxy primer you just need to be aware that that can is going to tell you when to paint and when to recoat and give you some information for example the um, flash time on the epoxy primer I'm using that's the time between when I put it on and when it's dry enough at 70 degrees to put another coat on is about 10 minutes uh, the repaint time on it I think is an hour but with a pro epoxy primer you've got about a three or four day window there that you can put paint on that after three or four days usually that epoxy will seal and and paint won't stick to it the, if you were to look at it under magnification that epoxy primer when it's wet would kind of look like an orange peel with with little teeny pock marks all over in it and and the paint can get into those pock marks and you get a mechanical seal plus the paint binds to the the epoxy primer before it's cured and it gives you a chemical seal if you wait past the four or five days then it glosses over and not really a gloss but it seals over and those holes close and paint won't stick to it so you have to take some of those scuff pads that I was using earlier in the video and rough it all up and and the bond's not as good. Uh, I'm not going to show painting this the, this gun stock with my airbrush because if there's one thing you don't want it's to get epoxy primer on something like a camera because the overspray goes anywhere and it's just like glue. It would it would ruin a camera. So so I'll come back after I've wiped this gun stock down and and shot the primer on it. I think the primer went on okay. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to let it dry for a little while. I've got three to four days with this Eastwood epoxy primer before it seals itself and won't take paint. So I'm going to let it dry and come back to it in a few hours and, and start putting some camo on it. And there's the first color coat. Now that that first color of uh, first coat of color is dried, I put these stencils on, well stickers on that I got from Acid Tactical. You can get them on Amazon. Um, I pref you can get stickers or stencils. The stickers go on like this. The stencils are go on and you shoot through the hole. Uh, the reason I like these stickers is because you peel them off of the sheet and then you have stencils if if you need to do some kind of touch up or use them from something else so so I, I like the stickers um, and I've I've put them on the gun now I'll shoot the second coat of color and I'm just using for 
color I'm using this Rust-Oleum camouflage uh, and you may just shoot this on your gun without a primer coat because it will adhere to plastic if you do that you want to let it set for I think it says five to seven days for a complete cure on plastic these synthetic stocks are nylon 66 or something it's it's a type of plastic but uh, but I'll I'll shoot this now with the second color and, and show you what it looks like I shot the second color and I peeled the stencils off. I like to take the stencils off of things I paint just as soon as I can touch it without getting paint all over me because if I let those uh, let that paint dry and cure for a day then I found that it kind of glues the stencils down and I have a much more difficult time getting them off. So now I'm going to take the first color and I'm going to dust it a little bit because these stickers give a pretty harsh detail line and so I want to cover that a little bit and I also want to make it a little darker so I might hit it with a, a flat black not again not paint it but just just give it a dusting to kind of tone it down a little bit the last coat uh, I didn't put a flat black on I thought it was dark enough with the second coat of that first color that I put on. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit too dark because the last step in this I'm going to wait for a week until everything's well cured and hardened and then I'm going to um, take some 1000 grit sandpaper 1200 grit and and wipe it off and smooth it down because that paint's going to leave kind of a rough texture and that's not that's not enjoyable to pack around and hunt with put your cheek up against so so when I come back in a week we'll finish it up and and catch you up here's the finished product and I know there's people out there saying that is a stupid camouflage pattern and coloring but it suits my needs uh, this gun is, isn't going to be a locker queen. It's going to be used for elk hunting. And here in the the forests of eastern Utah, western Colorado, this is a pretty good match for the dark, shady pine areas. Um, <clears throat> now, why you shouldn't do it? As soon as you put sandpaper to that synthetic stock, you've devalued your gun. It is worth less money. It's it's like buying a, a new truck that's blue and deciding you want to rattle can it red it's, it's you'll never be able to get as good a paint job you'll never have as good a finish it'll never be as hard a finish and unless you find somebody that's in love with that camo pattern the gun is going to be worth less uh, the other thing you have to realize that if this gun were a locker queen I'd probably be okay if it's something that I'm going to set in my gun locker and, and only take out a couple of times a year to, to show my friends or go a few times a year to the gun range and shoot it, that's one thing. But this gun is going to be in the gun rack on, a, on an ATV, it's going to be in the gun rack in a truck, it's going to be strapped to a backpack, it's going to be going through brush and dead and dried timber, and the paint job on this gun will never be finished it is continually going to get this paint scratched off from it and I'm continually going to be finishing it up again because you can't buy flat paint and not put a cover coat on it and get a hard solid everlasting finish you just it's just not possible so you could put a matte finish or a satin finish and and yeah then you'd have a shiny camel gun but you know that's not the purpose the other thing is that if you're hunting with this gun you're wearing orange anyway so it's not like you're camoed up and getting a lot of benefit from the camo I could have just painted it flat black and been fine and and if I'd had flat black epoxy primer that's what I would have done because that epoxy primer lasts forever um, but I if I hadn't bought this gun with a damaged stock and yeah, bad for the gun, good for me. I got it for about half of retail. 
in an auction, but but now I'm dealing with this. So so that's why you shouldn't paint a gun stock, but if you do, this is how I did mine. Hopefully it'll work for you.